For solving this problem, first of all, we need to determine section properties for that transform section, including the location of the centroid and the moment of inertia. We have two options. We can convert wood to steel or steel to wood. In this case, I'm going to transform wood to steel because we have just one wood part and we can just change the width of that. In this case, because we are going to transform wood to steel, we need to replace that with smaller parts of steel to be equivalent to wood, similar to the previous problem that we discussed. So, n factor should be smaller than 1, would be modulus of elasticity of wood divided by steel. So that would be 11 divided by 200, which is 0 0.055. Knowing that n factor, we just need to multiply the width of section by that n factor. So the new width for wood would be n multiplied by the initial width. Initial width is given as B minus 2 TF, which is the thickness of the flange of that seal part on the side. I'm going to plug the numbers. Width of the section is 250, and thickness of the flange is 10 millimeter. So the new width for wood would be 12.65 millimeter. Now let me draw that and show you how that transform section looks like. We have this C-channel steel shape, and the middle wood part now is shrinking into this size. So the shape is similar to the previous one. The only part that has changed is the middle part. Initially, it had larger width, and now it has transformed into smaller width of 12.65 millimeter. Now I need to determine the section properties for this part. To do that, I'm going to split that into two parts. The bottom part is hatched by green, one rectangle, and the top part, I'm going to combine those three rectangles into one rectangle because I can add up the width of those two parts and they are all having the same height. Area 1 would be width of the section multiplied by the thickness of the bottom part, or TW, 250 multiplied by 15, and I would get 3750 squared millimeter. And distance of that centroid to the bottom part of the section would be half of the, that part. So that would be 7.5 millimeter. For area 2, we are going to multiply height of the section by sum of the width of those three parts. So we have 1 TF on the left, 1 TF on the right, and trans width of the transform section at the middle part. So that would be the total width of the section and height of the section would be h minus tw, and I can determine the area for that. For determining the distance of centroid to the bottom part, that would be half of the height of those parts plus tw. So I'm going to write this down here and do the calculation. We get 47.5 millimeter. So with that, we can determine what is y bar. y bar would be sum of a multiplied by y divided by sum of area. We have two parts, we plug in the numbers, and we would determine the location of the centroid. In this case, that would be 21.96 millimeter. Now we need to determine what is the moment of inertia for this section. And I have determined already what is A, so let me determine D value. D value would be Y bar minus Y sub I. So y bar is determined as 21.96, and I can plug y1 and y2 in order to determine d1 and d2. So y1 was 7.5 millimeter, and that would give me d1 as 14.46 inch. Similar to that, d2 would be y bar minus y2, and that would give us negative 25.54 inch. Um, sign of d doesn't matter because you work with d squared. Starting with section number 1, we have IC1 plus A1 D1 squared. And similar to that, we can determine that for section number 2. Let's start with the first part on the bottom. In that case, we are determining the moment of inertia about the horizontal axis. And width would be parallel to that, height would be perpendicular to that. So width of the section is B, height would be TW. So moment of inertia about the centroid for section number 1, or IC1, would be B TW cubed over 12. Area for that part is determined, and D1 is also determined here, so I can plug the numbers. For the second part, we have width of the section as sum of the width of those three segments, which is 2 multiplied by TF 
plus width of the wood transform part. Height would be h minus tw. I'm going to use cube of that value and divide it by 12 plus area 2 multiplied by d2 squared. So we have all of these parameters. I'm just going to plug the numbers and we get 2.986 million millimeter to the fourth. This is the moment of inertia for the transformed section. Okay, let me just give you one hint here. This is the moment of inertia if we transform the section into steel. If we transform the section into wood, we would get different number for moment of inertia. But for centroid, it doesn't matter. If you transform that to wood or steel, the location of centroid would be the same. It is unchanged. But for determining the moment of inertia, it depends on what section you transform that to. So say the moment of inertia for steel is 2.986 million, as we got here. How much would be the moment of inertia if you transform the section to wood? In that case, we can use that n factor and convert them together. If we divide this moment of inertia by that n factor, we would get the moment of inertia for the wood section. Okay, now let's go and determine stresses in steel and wood. For determining stresses in steel, we have this equation mc over i. There is no n factor here in this equation because we originally had steel and we transformed the section to steel. That stress should be smaller than the allowable stress in steel, which is given to be 100 megapascals. I'm going to rewrite that into the equation based on moment. So moment has to be smaller than allowable stress multiplied by i divided by c. Okay, um, the section is non-symmetric. What C value should I use and plug that into this equation? C a distance to the top or distance to the bottom as shown in the figure. We need to see which one is larger and use the largest value because we need to determine what is the maximum stress and make sure that the maximum stress is smaller than the allowable stress in steel. Um, in this problem, y bar is given to be 21.96, and the entire height of section is 80 millimeter. So distance to the top would be larger. C value would be height minus y bar, or C top. And that would be 58 millimeter. Now I'm going to plug the values here. Sigma allowable in steel is 100. Moment of inertia is 2.986 divided by C and that would be 5.144 million Newton millimeter. All right, that would be the limiting moment if we want to make sure that stress in steel is not exceeding the given value. Now let's do the same for wood. For the wood part, we would have the same equation, mc over i, but we need to multiply that by the n factor because we have transformed the wood to steel. And that has to be smaller than the allowable stress in the wood. Now I'm gonna Rearrange this equation into an equation based on moment. Moment should be smaller than allowable stress in wood multiplied by i divided by c and divided by n. All right, what c value should I use in this problem? c would be the farthest distance of wood from the centroid. In this particular problem, that distance is the same as the one that we had before because look at the original shape. If the centroid is located 21.96 millimeter from the bottom part, the farthest distance of wood would be on the top to the centroid. So C is going to be the same as the previous case. This is not the case always. We need to look at the shape of the section. All right. Allowable stress in wood is 8. Moment of inertia is 2.986 million. N is 0 0.055 and C is 58 millimeter. And that would give us 7.483. The final answer would be the lowest of these two values. So 5.144 million Newton millimeter would be the final answer for this problem.